roads are wet today, and that means the chances of you getting into an accident are heightened. And also, uh, people out there could be using their horns, right. perhaps, but uh, there's some right and wrong ways to use it. A lot of people have opinions on the use of the horn. Joining us in the studio, <laughs> Officer Jake Sanchez from the CHP, to talk about these questions, uh, these issues, and we appreciate you being here as always. Thank you. Um, let's, talk about, let's talk about the use of the car horn. It's probably one of the more uh, polarizing things out there on the road, right? Because it, it frustrates one person, another person's frustrated using it. What's the right way to use the horns overall? So the proper way of using your horn is to, to warn somebody or let somebody know, hey, you know, maybe the light change or they're not maybe paying attention in front of you, you know, letting them know, hey, take a look. Are there different um, variations of it though, right? So you kind of have the light, little light tap versus yes, like a... It's just a warning, just a, a warning device. So yeah. that's what you're supposed to use it for. So a lot of times people will use it for a variety of other reasons. Maybe, you know, for, you know, excitement or, you know, their team just won, you know. Yeah. We were just talking about that, Oregon mm -hmm. winning uh, that's the right. Holiday wow. Bowl. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I know that's a, <laughs> a sore subject around here. Well. But, um, <laughs> Not but, yeah. from here. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when you have something like that, you know, that could be improper depending on, you know, where it is and, you know, obviously neighborhoods and you're trying to get your neighbor uh, or you're picking somebody up and you're honking your horn at 3 o'clock in the morning to get your, you know, someone to come out of the house. Um, that would be an improper use of the horn. Um, and so that could actually get you a citation and get you a, a ticket. Um, so if you're honking at somebody's house in the middle of the night, that could get you a ticket? Yes. So if you're like on the road like and you're out violation? in front of somebody's house and you're, you're, you're wailing on that horn, that could actually get you a citation. Huh. What, so. what are other ways you can get a ticket using your horn? Again, technically, like I said, if you're using it improperly, which again, if you're not using it as a warning device for, uh, for somebody, um, it, it could get you citations. So if you're driving down the road and you're just, you know, Padres just won a game and you're, you know, leaving, a, you know, Petco Park and you jump on that horn and start wailing <laughs> away and um, technically that would be a citation. Now, um, maybe some of the officers are doing the same too because they're a little excited. Maybe you're not going to get a, a ticket or maybe you're just going to get a warning. But uh, again, it, it kind of just plays into the, the fact that it is a... Have, have you ever given a ticket for that? <laughs> I might have given a citation for that uh, uh, back uh, a few years ago. I haven't wrote a lot of tickets lately, okay. uh, to be honest, Andrew. But uh, yes, uh, again, if somebody's using it improperly or to, uh, you know, try to scare somebody or do it, you know, um, and that and that's the case I issued it for was somebody was using it to. Uh, to try to intimidate or scare somebody else, then I, I did write that ticket. Can accidents happen if you're using your horn improperly? Absolutely. So again, um, people can easily be scared or startled uh, when somebody you know, is honking a horn. Um, even sometimes a motorcycle that's you know splitting lanes, sometimes they'll you know hit the horn or even rev the engine. Um, but if they're hitting the horn as they're blasting through you know cars, that could be you know startle somebody easily and yeah. they swerve out of the way. Uh, absolutely. You should talk to my wife. She should give her a ticket. She tries to do this. Like, you ever walk in front of the car and she's like slams in the horn just to like get you to jump? That's that's what she does. I think she does it to make me laugh. But if you give her a ticket, I'd be okay with. Yeah, <laughs> I may have done that a few yeah, times. Yeah, I think she's probably guilty too. Um, so let's talk about you know it's, it's raining it's right now. We have yeah. another storm on the way. Let's just talk about kind of reminders of like what are some things to keep in mind when you're out there on the road to make sure you stay safe because we all you know like the accident numbers go up like three or four times don't they during during rainy times absolutely it, you know the good thing is we've had some rain so it's not as slick out there the problem is um i noticed today as i came in you know traffic's a little lighter so when traffic's a little bit lighter people tend to drive a little bit faster we're already driving too fast when it's raining anyways uh so that that can lead to some problems again we drive too fast we're out of practice as san diegans we don't deal with rain very often. We, you know, we, we get it, what, eight times a year? Mm. So when we have those types of conditions, when it's raining and it's wet, we're driving too fast, um, not a good combination when, uh, when we have rain. Uh, the biggest thing, the best thing to do is slow down in the rain. Uh, give yourself uh, that ability to be able to slow uh, when you need to. Because what happens is when we have water on the roadway, our vehicles tend to uh, hydroplane. And when they hydroplane, people tend to panic. Mm. And when they panic, what they do is they end up stepping on that brake. Uh, and when they step on the brake, they lose full control of that vehicle. Uh, you could take that steering wheel when you're hydroplaning, and if you're braking, it's not going to do anything. You're just going to you're going to float whatever direction you were going prior to uh, hitting the brake, and you have no control. People really just tend to underestimate the conditions of the roads. Uh, even when there's just a little bit of rain on there, it just makes it slick. Very slick. And again, on a curve, uh, going you know downhill on a curve, all these things uh, again are uh, more dangerous 
Uh, you know, driving straight, you know, most cases is going to be a little safer. Uh, but when you're taking a, a corner or, or again, going downhill, your speed tends to go up, and that's when you, we see a lot of those problems. So remind us what the best thing to do is if you do start to hydroplane. What's the best way to handle that? Take your foot off the accelerator. Do not brake. Let the vehicle kind of re-engage with the road. Um, what ends up happening is, like you said, you're kind of riding on top of the water. You ever tap your brake or, or just leave no, it? No, uh, you're kind of, what you're actually kind of doing is you're actually like a speedboat in, in a sense. You're riding on top of the water. And that's what's kind of making your car kind of shift. When you feel it, you know it. Mm -hmm. Kind of gives you a little startled, you know, your stomach kind of gets a little bit, you know, we, you know, yeah. queasy a little bit, right? Sure. And we all know that feeling. And, you know, what you want to do is just kind of release a little bit, keep your, you know, firm grip on the wheel, kind of keep your tires straight, take that foot off the accelerator and the brake, let the car resettle. And what it's going to do is it's going to kind of set back onto the road. And when, when you feel it re engage, then you can start if to If you slow. start to turn, do you turn, do you turn back straight? You turn, you not touch it at all. Again, it kind of depends on the circumstances. Um, you know, depending on which way your car is going. You know, what kind of if you're on a curve, if you're not on a curve, the best thing to do. I, you know, I don't want to tell people, you know, exactly because I don't know their exact situation. Sure. But the best thing to do is you'll feel when you feel that re-engagement. That's when you kind of can start to slow. Um, turning the wheel, um, kind of hard to give you the right exact um, mm -hmm. answer for that because again. Uh, I don't want to tell somebody on the air without knowing their situation exactly what to do when, when they start to, to, to turn. You kind of just want to keep your hands steadily on the wheel, though. Keep That's the, a big keep thing. Keep the wheel as straight as possible. Of course. And then wait till it starts to stick to the roadway. Exactly. And then headlights. Headlights always. Whenever your windshield wipers are on, the law says you have to have your headlights on. Never hurts to have your headlights on all the time, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Right. Much easier to see them. All right, Officer Sanchez, thank you as always. We appreciate it, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week for more Thanks, Rules Andrew. of the Road. All right. Happy New Thanks, Year. Thanks, Maria. Happy right. New Year.